Hi, Eric here with 30x40 Design Workshop. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the camera equipment that I chose for my architectural practice and some reasons why you may choose a similar setup for your architectural photography needs. Now, uh, this what I've chosen is a sort of mid-range digital SLR solution, and I'm actually recording with the camera that I'm using right now because it has digital capabilities. I had an existing uh, Canon camera and a couple of Canon lenses. This is the 40D. I actually ended up picking the 70D, and I'll talk about the reasons why I did that. And sort of midway through this video, I'm gonna transition over to my laptop to do the rest of the recording there. So you'll also be able to see the quality difference in the video, um, and then I'll also be able to walk you through some of the features on the actual camera itself. So as we begin, I wanna talk about some reasons why you would select a digital SLR. Number one is image quality. Now I was used to taking site photos um, and finished architectural photos with my iPhone, which really is not a great solution. I wanted something that would provide better image quality and the digital SLRs that I was looking at uh, in the range, uh, in my price range, which is about $1,000 for the camera body, uh, basically were 20 megapixels. Now 20 megapixels is a, a lot of pixels. Obviously the image resolution is fairly high. So I know I'm gonna be able to submit to digital magazines and print magazines and have the optimal resolution that they'll need for those. Equally, if I wanna print these, some of these images out in a large format, that's enough resolution to do that. So that's number one concern, image quality. Now, I know the iPhone 7 is coming out and that's rumored to have a 21 megapixel camera, but still I think there are other features that make a digital SLR worthy of consideration if you're looking at it for architectural use. The primary advantage here is that it allows you to swap out lenses. You can change wide angle lenses for zoom lenses, macro lenses. You have a whole different series of options when you go with the digital SLR. If you're using your iPhone, you are limited to the um, aperture, the fixed aperture of the phone here. Uh, there are obviously external lenses that you can add to this, but the quality of those is just way below what you're gonna need for any serious architectural practice. Digital SLRs provide a whole range of options when it comes to adjustments. These are in-camera adjustments of white balance, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO settings. So those things make this a real versatile player in any sort of lighting conditions. Now, if you're talking about taking night photography or getting the sort of glowing dusk shot of a building, you're gonna need a DSLR to do that. I wanted to be able to capture more videos like this. I wanted to be able to capture sort of design in process. I wanted to experiment with making short films and basically the experience of space. Uh, you know, experiencing architecture has a lot to do with how you walk through it, how you experience it, how you move in, and where you look. And capturing it in video is really just an essential part of that. And I feel like the sort of future of video and um, architectural work uh, online is going to revolve around video. Number one is the field of view or the capture angle. Wider angle lenses in general for architectural photography are gonna be more desirable. You obviously have space constraints with smaller interior rooms, bathrooms, uh, small living spaces, or spaces where you're on a street and you're trying to capture a taller building, you're gonna need a wider field of view and a wider angle lens to capture most of the architectural situations that you encounter. You'll notice that when you're trying to capture a building, let's say it's a really tall building, as you turn your camera from the horizontal plane or level plane, to capture the full frame of the building, you'll notice that the lines will tend to converge as you tilt your camera. And what that does is it makes the building look like it's sort of tipping or falling over. It's not a good look, and you'll notice professional architectural photographers have a way of dealing with this. And typically what they do is they use tilt shift lenses. Now tilt shift lenses are really expensive. They were not even an option that I could consider here, but I'll tell you how I sort of address that uh, in a little bit when we talk about the camera that I actually chose. Now, a DSLR will allow you to manually adjust the exposure settings, the ISO, the film speed, the aperture size, and so they make, they make really great versatile partners. You're gonna to need to capture spaces, interior spaces in varying light conditions. A DSLR, allows you the option to change all of these parameters to be able to capture photographs in a wide variety of lighting situations. 
ability to change white balance and these manual exposure settings, it's really kind of necessary if you want to accurately represent both interior and exterior spaces. I think there's sort of three things that feed into this decision and maybe a fourth thing that we'll talk about at the end that will, will help sort of sway you one way or the other. Number one thing is price, obviously. Everyone has a budget. Your budget may differ than mine. My budget was around $1,000 for the camera body and then I wanted to spend maybe up to about a third of that in addition on lenses or a lens. And uh, in that price range, in general, your camera, your DSLR camera is going to be a crop sensor camera. Now the sensor in a camera is what allows you to capture the image. And there are generally two types of sensors, the crop sensor, which is smaller, and the full frame sensor. The nearest full frame sensor in a DSLR comes in the Canon 6D. Now I was looking at Canon because I already had some Canon lenses and I was familiar with it. I knew they were a good manufacturer. Uh, if you already have lenses for a Nikon, you may be considering a Nikon. So the 6D is the nearest full frame sensor. Now a full frame sensor obviously is going to give you a larger image resolution um, and you have more options when it comes to lenses, especially for architectural photography. However, a full frame sensor is another $500 just for the camera body and then we're talking additional on top of that for lenses. So I chose to go with the 70D because that had a crop sensor and it was a fairly new, new camera. The crop sensor doesn't mean you'll be paying for lower quality, you'll be getting lower quality. It just means you need to think about the lenses that you're using on this sensor a little bit differently. The crop sensor, because it's smaller, allows us to buy a camera at a lower price. Now, uh, when you're looking at choosing lenses for crop sensor cameras, you're going to have to multiply the lens uh, focal length by a factor to get the effective focal length of that lens. So for the camera that we chose, basically you'd have to multiply the focal length of the lens by 1.6 to get the effective focal length. Now, a 24 millimeter lens like the one that I bought here, this EFS 24 millimeter 2.8 aperture lens, you're going to have an effective focal length of 38 millimeters. So multiplying the 24 by 1.6, you get 38 millimeters. I also chose a EF 40 millimeter 2.8 aperture lens. And to get the effective focal length of this, again, we're gonna multiply by 1.6 and we get about 64 millimeters. Okay, so as we're talking about the price range for these mid-level DSLR cameras, they're gonna be about $1,000. Now you can take a step back to um, T5i, which is gonna be probably around $600. Uh, you'll get a smaller sensor with that. Again, it's a crop sensor, so you'll have the same factor that you'll have to deal with. You can take a step up to the 6D, which is about $1,500 to get the full frame sensor. I chose Canon because they have a lot of market dominance here in, this, in the DSLR market. Um, and basically, you know, the equipment availability is great. You can buy used equipment now and in the future. Uh, you can sell your existing equipment as you look to upgrade. There's lots of support. There are tutorials. There are troubleshooting guides online. So lots of information out there. If you're looking to upgrade to tilt shift lenses, you're going to want to be looking at Canon and Nikon probably, which are two popular manufacturers that have more options for you. You'll be able to fit their, their uh, camera bodies with the upgraded lenses there. Okay, so lenses. Now I want to talk about the two primary types of lenses. There are zoom lenses and prime lenses. Prime lenses have a fixed focal length. That is, you cannot change the angle or field of view of this of this lens without moving the camera physically backward or forward. A zoom lens allows you to change the field of view or the focal length of the lens, the amount that is in the frame, simply by adjusting uh, on the lens. In order to do that same adjustment with a prime lens, you need to walk yourself, change the distance between the camera and the subject manually, physically moving the lens backward or forward. Now, those differences are important to appreciate in architectural photography. If you have a small room, you uh, having a zoom lens allows you to sort of change your field of view without having to walk backward. You can imagine the limitations in a small room of being able to adjust the distance between the camera and the object that you're trying to capture. 
Now, a prime lens and a zoom lens have other important differences. Prime lens, in general, for the same amount of money, you will have a higher quality lens. If you can only afford to buy one lens, I guess I would have to recommend you buy a zoom lens. For me, I opted to buy two prime lenses, one that was done, one that was tailored more toward zoom work, and another that was uh, tailored more toward wide angle work. And we'll talk about the exact one that I chose in a moment here. Um, the important thing about a zoom lens is that it has more moving parts. It is not tailored to, you know, the glass in the lens has to work over a wide range of focal lengths. And so a prime lens overall will have better quality glass in it and allow you to ca capture sharper images than a zoom lens. Zoom lens will obviously be more versatile in a variety of situations, and so you need to weigh your budget against those sort of factors. There are some basic accessories I'm gonna recommend you buy, and once you do that, you start to level the playing field with all of these other sort of characteristics. So a crop sensor camera is really close to a full frame sensor camera when you put it on a tripod, for example. So we start sort of leveling the playing field when we add in a few basic accessories. And I'll go through exactly the ones that I purchased here in a moment. 